That is the purpose of worship. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty to change. See, you really can't change yourself. All you can do is rearrange the chairs on the Titanic of, of our lives. Just, I'm going to do better. I'm going to try better. I'm going to do this. But only he can bring the change. And when you're in the presence of God like this, this is when you say, do it, God. This is when you get the, the weaknesses and you get the struggles. And you, when you're in the presence of God like this, you just say, do it, God. Yes, God, do it. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. To do what? To transform us. How many is ready for some transformation to go on in your life today? Ready? Mm. And I believe it's going to happen. I have such a, a deep confidence that God is going to answer your prayers that you prayed this week. And you're not going out the same way you came in. You know, in the Old Testament, in the Old Tabernacle, whatever entrance you came in, north, south, east, or west, you couldn't go out the same entrance. If you came in that door, you had to go out another door. <laughs> None of you are going out the door you came in. That's just, it's just the way it is. So honor to our founding pastors, Pastor Torre and Sarah, and great love and respect. Love them dearly. Uh, I'm one of the pastors at Lakewood Church, but this is a part of my covenant relationship is with you and with your pastors for many years, and so I count it a great joy. Thank you for always being so respectful and so kind to me, and uh, I really feel the really wonderful presence of God. Now, I came, uh, I flew all night, 19 hours from uh, Italy to be here today. And uh, proof, proof right there. My wife, our 46th wedding anniversary was in the 8th in Italy, and my wife bought these for me. I thought uh, only one church would let me get away with right this. <laughs> I, I, I don't know whether or not I could. I was, I was like a kid this morning. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to wear it. So, but I missed one day in all of it. So at some point, if I just pass out, just go with me there. Just, just like, but I have a, a great confidence that Jesus is going to touch you today. It's going to be fantastic. So let me read my text while you're standing. Keep me company. And that's part of the culture of the church here. So open your Bibles anywhere. I'm going to preach. It. No, I'm teasing. Uh, John, the 16th chapter. And let me set it up while you're getting there. Or you're, it goes on the screen. So very important to understand that John 16, 17, John 14, 15, 16, and 17. We're going to read John 16 were the last 4,000 words that Jesus spoke before he was crucified and ascended. He hung out on the earth for 40 days after that. So these 4,000 words were important words. And, and, and I want you to grasp the, the context of, of the words I'm about to read as a, as a text. Is I want you to imagine being with Jesus for three and a half years. Just go with me, just get your mind, most of you are creative, so just go with me. You wake up and there's Jesus. Good morning, Jesus. How you doing today, son of God? What are we gonna do today? Well, we're gonna bust up a few funerals. <sighs> we're gonna take a boy's happy meal and we're gonna have a banquet. But seriously, Imagine what it would be like if right now Jesus just came right into this room and he just came right here. Hello, my children. If he looked you in the eye and took you by the hand, what do you need, child? Jesus. Jesus. How precious would that moment be? If you could have an audience with Jesus. Now, and 
you, you went there with me, I could feel it. Now, hear Jesus say these words, I'm leaving. And, but don't panic and don't worry. You think it was miraculous that I broke through the veil of a virgin Mary, wrapped myself in a DNA strand cell, and manifested on the earth God in flesh. You think that was something. I'm about to do something that will blow your mind. I'm going to go away but I'm going to prepare a place. It's been in you the whole time, but no one's been able to get access to it. But I'm going to unveil and open up your heart. And I, who have been with you, well, you touched me. You grabbed my garment. You, you called my name out. You could feel my breath. You, who have been with me, I shall be in you. And if you understood that, you would say to me, hurry up, get out of here, so we can have that happen. So in John 14, he tells them, don't be troubled, it's okay. John 15, hey, we're gonna be like vine and a branch. You're not gonna know where you start and where I ended, where I ended and you started. We're one. And then in chapter 16, he says these words. When he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you of things to come. Somebody say, come Holy Spirit. Whew. Dare you to lift your hands like this and say, come Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you for your anointing that's on this house, on this moment. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. 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 Let's talk a little bit. You may be seated. I'm going to talk about positively convicted. Positively convicted. Now, I had to put positively in there because conviction just makes people feel uncomfortable. Even while I'm saying it, I see some of you squirming a little bit. Conviction. Ooh. Conviction has this sense, uh, a bite to it, an intimidation factor like, you're convicted. Oh, conviction. I've been convicted. And true, the Holy Spirit is a convictor. He's a counselor. He's a comforter. He guides us. He leads us. He fills with joy and peace. But the greatest attribute that I want you to release and, and be released and for you to grasp today is that the Holy Spirit convicts. And it's a positive experience. Positively convicted. When we think of the word convicted, we often think in terms of that feeling we get when we do something bad, and that's really unfortunate because that's not really where the power of conviction is really all about. In fact, one of the things we must always understand, and that is the devil, the enemy, is not creative. So he has to emulate, he has to copy. He does knock off labels. And so he takes good things and he tries to emulate, copy them, and then tries to sell you the knockoff version of the designer intent. 
That's why Christianity will always have imitators, always be hypocrites, always be people that are flaky, always because there's something to imitate. If it was nothing, well, it would be nothing, but it is something and the enemy likes to imitate. And so conviction is your greatest friend. Conviction is your greatest source of power. And yet, because the enemy has created a substitute, a counterfeit called condemnation. And because we don't know the difference, we embrace conviction as being condemnation. Conviction is what I feel when I do something I shouldn't do. Oh man, I shouldn't have done that. I feel bad. And that's what we think is conviction. As a result of that, we have a tension with conviction. We, 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 we sometimes ignore it. Uh, you know, it's better to ask forgiveness than ask permission. Because we really think that condemnation is just really an errand boy for God to make us feel bad for not doing what we should have done. And that is so far from the truth. I want to change your understanding of how God works. In simple terms, conviction will always lead you to God. Condemnation will push you away from God. In real simple terms, you can pretty much draw the line right there. When you feel what you might think is conviction, if it pulls you away, if it causes you to withdraw, it is not conviction. And you need to not get off on that exit. That's the wrong exit. Do not enter that path. Because you get down that path, you're never coming out. Some people, their whole relationship with God is based on condemnation. That's all the God they know. They do bad, come to church. Some people, they, they, they like preachers to preach harsh because they want to feel bad. It feels good to feel bad. Come on, preacher, preach it. Get up there and preach against sin. Make me feel bad. I'm addicted to feeling bad. I feel bad. Oh, God, forgive me. And then you go right on and do it again. I'm not talking to you all. I'm talking to these people that are, I don't know who I'm talking to. Whatever. Just ignore me. I came from Italy. It took 19 hours. I missed a whole day. Excuse me. But there are people, can you believe it, that are addicted to guilt. In fact, to be a little philosophical and kind of an overview, Italy's an amazing place. It's like walking into a time machine. I mean, everywhere you look, there's buildings that are over a thousand years old. It's fascinating. It's like you're just walking into history. I'm more fascinated with who was seeing what I saw 500 years ago. Just walls and buildings that were existed over a thousand years ago. I'm just fascinated churches at one point the guy said the guy told us in some of the villages there were more churches than there were people they would just build a church in in the name of a saint or someone that they thought was good churches everywhere but it was hollow you could sense that the form of godliness was there but the power had long left the building and i asked myself we're going, we're going there. We're, we're going to where the kingdom's going to reign, where, where popes and priests, kings stood in line to talk to them. That's how much power they had. But then it became corrupted. It brought chills to me in my mind, thinking, Jesus, help us to know the kingdom way versus man's way. But you could just sense... And, and the people, their relationship with God is based on guilt, 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 condemn, 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 confession, confession, confession. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I feel bad, I feel bad. And that is the trap. Let me tell you something. Shame is a hook. That when you take the bait of shame, it's a guarantee you will return. Maybe not tomorrow. Maybe not next week. 
But if shame brought you to the altar, shame owns you. And I want to tell you, shame does not work for God. Shame is not on God's payroll. But this, this conviction, this is a powerful force. And because we don't know the difference between condemnation and conviction, we have a tendency to ignore, to avoid, and not treat it for what it's worth. And that is that it is a powerful force, you see. Because morals and morale cannot be separated. And conviction and confidence cannot be separated if you know how to let conviction work in you to help you resist those things that are bad that same conviction will be the kind of conviction that will help you live your dream that will give you the courage not to quit that will give you the ability to believe against all odds they're both connected if you ignore one then you're weakened in the other and if you lack the ability to hear God and have confidence in God's voice to your life, then rewind a little bit. <laughs> and ask yourself, at what point am I ignoring conviction? And then wanting to have the ability to be confident in my decisions later on. Embrace them, embrace them, bring them together and know that Jesus said, I know you liked me when you, we hung out. I know you liked, you acted really good when we hung out. But I'm leaving, but I'm sending another. And this other is going to be not someone that's just going to be with you, but shall be in you. Embrace conviction as the most powerful force you could ever ever have in your life it gives you something to believe in it gives you something to believe for and conviction actually the word means to reprove it means to reprove conviction isn't conviction until it's been given an opportunity to face resistance it's called moral muscles you get muscles, they tell me, <laughs> from resistance. Now, your pastor, he's, he's made a decision to get his body physically in shape, and, and, and I'm thinking about it, too. I'm thinking about it, too. I'm, <laughs> I'm 68, and I'm like, I'm thinking about giving myself at 70, you know, a body that I can look at in the mirror and not be ashamed of. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not quite there yet. My theme up until now has been no pain, no pain. <laughs> it's like I had people buy, you know, membership thing. And I, I go there. And, hey, this is cool. Look at all these people. Great. I'm like, one, two. Oh, no, I don't like this one. <laughs> one, two. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, right? So the conviction that it takes to know better, to say no, behind that no is a yes waiting to embrace you for the impossible dream. And, and to be comfortable with having the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit wants to take responsibility. Here's the thing. Christianity is not a list of rules or disciplines. Christianity is different than all other religions. All religions have disciplines. If you follow their disciplines, then you will benefit. If you'll do this, do that. The law demands but gives you neither feet nor hands. A better song grace does sing. It bids us fly and gives us wings. You want that again? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do this, do that. The law demands, but gives us neither feet nor hands. A better song grace does sing. It bids us fly and gives us wings. See, conviction is not condemnation. Conviction is the power 
to know right and wrong and the power to do right from wrong. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews 5.14 that this moral muscle, this conviction comes by reason of use. You use it. And are you lose it, right? You use your conviction. You learn to listen when he whispers, yes, no. This is where you have to have this supernatural ability to know that God loves you, that God is for you, that God is not against you, and that you have to recognize that when he convicts you, He's setting you up. He's preparing you. He's teaching you how to be guided by the Spirit. Look, we have great pastors. Our pastor, Pastor Torrey and Sarah, are the most, they're on the edge of hearing God having an apostolic, an apostle prophetic edge. That's why their ministry is doing what it's doing. I say, God, do whatever you're going to do. And I think it's amazing how one church is holding itself together with our fine staff and our great pastors. I think it's a a phenomenal testimony to us. And we hear strong preaching and strong teaching here. But one of the things you must learn, and that is, when you're a baby, you need somebody to tell you what's right and what's wrong. When you're a child and you need someone to say, no, 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 don't touch the oven. No, 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 don't play out in the street. When you're a child, you need people to tell you, no, you don't dress that way. No, you don't act that way. That's all important. That's the job of the ministry is to protect and to perfect you for the work of your ministry. But at some point, you have to step into that realm where you are able to hear The voice of God and recognize conviction and know its sound and know its voice. One of the things that I observed in Italy, did I tell you I went to Italy? Yeah, I went to Italy. But this, yeah, yeah. Is every one of these villages. And they still exist. They're like miniature subdivisions. We went to one village, a thousand people live there. Every village is surrounded by a wall. Every village has a wall, a circle, a wall, and a watchtower. And it was the responsibility to protect your family, protect your resources, protect your territory. Build a wall around it. And then make sure you had somebody at the watchtower looking out. And the way they posture those on a hill, you could look and you could see anyone coming from any direction. You could see, okay, okay, we're okay, we're okay, we're okay. And in my mind, I could think, no wonder the King James Version tells us that we should bring every thought into captivity. And that we should build strongholds that give us the ability. And today what I'm telling you is the Holy Spirit as a convictor is trying to tell you, let me help you put some walls around your life, around your dreams, around your legacy, around the life that I have for you. Let me help you protect yourself from you and those that would not want the best for you. You gotta have walls. I, I, I want you to see walls as protectors and projectors. They protect what you have, they project what you got, who you are. I want you to think of a crown. Watch, ready? See a crown? Crown over my head. What does that crown do? That crown is a wall. It says, This mind is protected. Not anyone and everybody gets access to get in here. I don't watch everything. I don't listen to everything. I got ears. I got eyes. And I got somebody watching over. I got a Holy Spirit convictor that tells me. And and when you get good at it, after a while, when you listen to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, I can see a lie coming in slow motion. Right? I can watch a movie and know 
before he even gets there. Oh, I know where this is going. <laughs> yeah, that, that, see, the way he looked at the way that, 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 oh, I know where this is going. No, thank you. Click. The convictor protects you, projects you into your destiny. The confidence you lack is coming from the conviction you attack. Embrace them, for he, the spirit of truth, will guide you and teach you all things. If you've been in the church for a while and you still need people to tell you what to do, tell you how to live your life. Tell you. See, I was right. Let me just say, let me just say something because I have to be very careful. I, I, you know, I'm 68 and been in church 68 years plus nine months in my mother's womb. I've been in the ministry for 50 years. All right, I've got where I am today by the grace of God. I understand grace. I understand the grace of God. I understand so many, but sometimes I want to take people that are in the process over here, and I want to just pick them up and bring them right over here. Oh, man, you need to, boom, without realizing that I had to go through a process to understand what grace really means. Grace is a revelation that the same God of the Old Covenant, of the Old Testament, the God that would make you shudder, at his name is the same God. That's why grace is so amazing. Because yeah. you realize. Whoa. Whoa. So I was raised in a very strict Pentecostal. My mom and dad were preachers. And we were, we were holy rollers. No, for real. real. I grew up watching people. Run the aisles. Some of you are looking at me like, what planet are you from? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Women, no cut your hair. My wife didn't cut her hair her whole life till she was 30 years old. She cut an inch off, and we felt like we were walking in blasphemy. <laughs> like, oh, God. We never had a television. No television in our house. Oh, no. Oh, no. Comics were allowed if you snuck them. No going to any sports events because they sold alcohol. So we couldn't go to no sporting events. Little league baseball games, yeah, I could go there. So no makeup, no pants, no cutting the hair. We don't smoke, we don't chew. There's nothing we can do. We are happy people, yes we are. <laughs> and we were threatened with our life over our behavior every week in order to keep doing it that way. We'd have to be dangled over hell in order to do it another week because there was no convictor. It was man-made religion. Now, let me tell you something. I, 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 what, let, me, let me try to break this down real quick. At my, we, where we lived, our neighbor had beautiful grass, Beautiful green grass, lush grass, like Augusta. I mean, beautiful. Next door, our house, weeds, dandelions, <laughs> patches of, you know, One day I was out there, my dad said, you better get out there. Tom's getting mad at us because our lawn, I got that. I'm just watering everything. And my neighbor comes over there, Phil, listen, don't water the weeds. <laughs> See, you got three patches of good grass. Go over there, water that. And now don't water it too much because the roots that are supposed to go down will turn and get the easy water. Don't make the preacher be your convictor. Don't make somebody be your conscience. You need to say, God, I know you love me. I know you would never condemn me, but I know you are my protector. You're my provider. Give me the courage to hear your voice and the courage to let you be the force behind your voice to do what you say. Go ahead. That's a good place right there. To boom, boom, boom. Bam. Yeah. That's why a lot of people that left our denomination Many of them just went crazy the first three or four years. 
because they didn't have a conscience. Your conscience is your most important. That's the tool the convictor uses. Guard it, protect it. Your view of God comes through that. Your view of everyone else comes through that. Once that gets tainted, tilted, once that becomes broken, it's, it, it, it's, it's like the, the old man at, outside of the city. It, he was like a watchman at the gate. People come by. Old oh, man, tell me what kind of city this is. The old man say, what city are you coming from? Oh, he said, it's terrible. People are terrible. They're stuck up. They're gossipers. They're hateful. We have to get out of there. We want to look for another city. The old man says, oh, don't come here. People are the same. <laughs> oh, a few hours later, somebody else come by. Oh, man, what kind of city is this? Oh, what kind of city you come from? Oh, good city, wonderful people. Just no opportunities for our children. Ah, oh, come into this city. The people are the same. <laughs> I'm praying that the convictor will become such a prized gift to you that it will put you in a level of not only protection, but project you into the place and destiny that God has for you. That the anointing will teach you and guide you and empower you. That this conviction will give you confidence in who you are and whose you are. Here's the thing. Conviction has to be tested. See, the word conviction means reprove or reprove it, or prove it. So, it's just a thought until it's tested. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's a good thought. I, I want conviction, all right? Well, the, it, it's like if I said, if I went over your house today and said, uh, here's a Rolls Royce. I don't have a Rolls Royce, not yet. But if you want to give me a birthday and all that coming up, all that, uh, uh, boom, boom. But if I said, uh, would you watch over this? Don't drive it, but I need you to watch over it. Don't drive it. But if I take the keys, then you're not tested. But if I lay those keys right there on the kitchen table and I say, don't drive it. Day one, day two, just gonna touch the keys. See, you don't know, you don't know how much moral muscle you have. Now, no, never blame God for being tempted with evil because God tempts no one with evil. But know that when you are tempted with evil, that's a good chance for you to measure your convictor. To see if it's working. Beep, 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 beep. Because you know what? You need it to work. Beep, beep. Because over here, when you got a chance to sign a contract, to go into partnership, to buy a house, to start a business, beep, 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 beep. You need to hear that beep, 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 beep. And if you can't hear that beep, 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 over here, over, don't be doing that. You know that's the wrong part. You know where that's going. Beep, beep, beep. Come on, talk to me. Beep, beep, beep. You know, come on. Boom. 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 When you embrace that work. You see, the difference between a swamp and a river is the water is the same, but the swamp has no borders, no walls, no lines. It makes its way. It has a path. A swamp takes in everything. This is what happens to us if the convictor is not at work. Don't be afraid of a no. Don't be afraid of a closed door. Don't be afraid to stand. You know, we talk about spiritual warfare and Ephesians 6 and all that. You know, put on the whole armor of God. Never to fight. It never says to fight. Never. You put it all for one reason. Stand. Because there's going to be times in your life that everything's going to be groovy, right? It's going to be perfect. 
You understand the Bible. Oh, the Bible's so real to me. Holy Spirit. Oh, he feels like my best friend. And the script of your life, oh, it's all in sync. Oh, this is a Christian lie. And then, and then, and then, and then happens. All Greek to me. (laughs) Holy Spirit, where are you? Hello? Testing. One, two, three. Hello? And your life is a mess. From harmonic to chaotic. And, and, And when that happens, what do you do? Here's what you do. When it's dark, don't move. Don't make any sudden moves in the dark. Yeah, you and the wife, you're fussing, you're fighting. She's going through some things, you're going through, blah, 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 blah. Don't be thinking about, I like what Billy Graham's wife said, Ruth, years ago. She said, we never talk divorce, never. Murder, yes. (laughs) She said, I didn't say it. Wait for the sun to come. Wait for the morning star to rise in your heart. We'll deal with the issues later. Right now, no sudden moves. Your best move is no move. And then when the sun rises, oh, there was a cliff over there. Oh. See, Jeannie and I have been married for 46 years. Let me tell you something. Those 46 years, look, for, look, I got to hurry. Birthdays are a given. I don't, you know, I don't make a big deal out of people's birthday. Well, I'm 70 years old. Well, good for you. All you did was get up out of bed. You didn't earn it. <laughs> Anniversaries, oh, they cost. Anniversaries every day. <sighs> oh, you don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> And if you do, you're so smart not to say anything. <laughs> Just stare straight ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see, I made a vow to a vow. I made a vow to my marriage. Now, I know things happen. That marriage is where I get my power from. My wow comes from the vow. And it means that you face resistance. You face the differences. You face the, and, and, and in fact, I, I, if you don't, like when people come to me when I was pastoring, oh, will you marry us? Why? We're in love. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Great. What's love got? No, no, not just this. Uh, do you guys fight, argue? Oh, no, pastor, never. Okay. Get about three or four good heated arguments, then come back and see me. Because it's like, it's like after like about 90 days, I don't think it was 90 days, nine days after I got married. I was like, who is this woman? I mean, she says tomato, I say tomato. I mean, dude, whoa. It's like God's like, okay, I'm going to move the human race up another notch. All right, I'm going to take the coffee family. I like all the things they are. And then the Muncie family. And I'm going to cause a fusion, the best of both. Woo-hoo-hoo! Oh, okay. So he sprinkles some magic dust and golden dust in the room. We've only just begun to... I love you, honey. And then... Right? But then this is what you get right here. I got three kids and five grandkids. Yeah? My oldest grandson is 16 years old. I'm only saying this not to intimidate. I'm only saying this to inspire. My oldest grandson is 16 years old. You know what? If I can hang in there and let the convictor do the work, I might just well be in 10 years at the hospital watching my grandchild have a grand have a boy, a girl, and I've got the wife of my hand, of my wife with my hands, and I'm looking and I'm saying, 
man, was there anything? This is what I thought on our honeymoon. Sorry for being so personal. I thought, you know, I'd rather be reconciled than right. 46 years, and you know how you get there? If it's not going to matter in 46 years, if it's not going to matter in 46 months, 46 weeks, I got 46 minutes. If it's not going to matter then. And see, Jeannie and I went to Italy. Did I tell John went to Italy? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Over 20-something years we accumulated and then saved for 12 years 987,000 points with American Express. We went to Italy on equity. Yeah, that private boat. I don't want to get on that ferry with all those other people. American Express. How many points? Done. How's your equity line? How's your relationship equity? Oh, I'm, I'm going to work it because I'm tired. I, I, I'm, I'm going to work it. I'm, I know you're going to get mad at me, but I'm going to go ahead. Say, go ahead. This is going to sound harsh. It's not really meant for you. It's meant for the people watching. No, not really. You can't rent a church and build equity. At some point, lock in. Because you don't get equity when you rent. You know that. But when you buy, equity starts. As a pastor for 30 years in Orange County, how many people come up to me? Oh, my God, Pastor Phil, this is it. You're the pastor. God sent us here. We're supposed to be here. Oh, we love you. After a while, I was like, yes. I just smiled. I like, Wait till you get offended. We'll talk then. <laughs> Loyalty begins where offense ends. <laughs> Don't be afraid. I'm closing. Of the convictor. Embrace the convictor. Don't do the job of the Holy Spirit on your spouse. Give. Let me tell you. Phil, I, my son here, he hates when I use him, when I say his name and stuff. So, uh, Too late, sorry. And you know what, this may be too personal, but I feel led just to encourage other people, Phil, so you and I can have it out on the way home. But, um, you know, Phil saw a lot of junk. He was raised in the church, so he saw a lot of flakiness. He saw a lot of things. He's very observant. And he walked away from his faith for a long, long, long time. And he just came back to it. And it's, it's his faith. And it's his journey. And it's not, he's not, he's not following in my footsteps but he's following in the footsteps of his faith that he's found. But I tell you, my wife and I made a decision a long time ago. We knew he would. And so you know what? We didn't use up our equity. Yelling at him, condemning him. He did a few bad things. Did you maybe? Would you? Maybe? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there was a moment one time when him and I had it out, man. Nose to nose, man. He was breaking me. He broke me down, man. And I had broke him down. And I said, God, I'm taking this too personal. I'm trying to play God. Wow. I'm not you. I'm a, I, I'm, you know what? I'm going to love him. I'm just going to love him. I'm just going to love him. And if he's doing something that's not right, whatever, you know what? You're God. I'm not God. Yeah. And now he's one of my best friends right now. So, oh, why am I saying that? Whoa. I'm saying. Welcome. Welcome the convictor. Positively, let conviction be a part of your life. Just go backwards a few steps and realign. You let that convictor convict you and not condemn you. He'll give you power. And because, you know, it's the secret places where everything happens. People say, Pastor, give me a prophetic word about my future. I'll give you one. Go in the closet and listen to your secrets. Tell me your secrets and I'll tell you your future. 
because whatever your secrets are, they'll be shouted on the rooftop because they're just seeds. That's all they are. They're seeds. And so you take those secrets and you say, God, help me. Help me. And you know, when you get out in the light, I mean the sirens will go off, I'm telling you. When you get in there. Sorry, sorry. Watch. Watch. People think there's a fight between light and darkness. Next time you're in a dark room, turn on the light switch. See how much fighting goes on. It's like, no. Gone. That's what happens to your dark secrets. God, when I'm alone, when I'm in a motel room, when something's on the channel that I can watch and nobody will ever know what I'm watching, there'll be no record of what I'm watching. And that comes by the station and I could watch that. That could be my dirty little secret. But I've learned that the convictor is a good, good helper. And I did get it out there in the light. And he reminds me that in every deed there is a seed. And my daddy's in the room and so is my daughter and so is my granddaughter. They're all in the room there and I don't want any secrets. I'm just gonna flip that channel. Don't need anybody to preach it. Don't need anybody to pound the pulpit. I've learned the convictor is my friend. I've learned the convictor says, it's not good for you. Get your dignity back. You're better than this. Thank you, convictor. Thank you. Whew, I feel him right now. The convictor is here telling you, I love you. I'm not trying to rob you of anything or anybody. That's the convictor. Yeah. You get that out in the light and you become free. So in closing, I was praying for you on the 19-hour flight from Italy. Did I tell you Italy? That was it. Yeah, okay. When I was going to preach a message, I'll preach it next time. But the Lord said, tell them, uh, tell them about my, the convictor. Tell them my, the convictor wants to help them. That the convictor can help them with their marriage and with their kids and with their dreams. They got a bad rap on my convictor and they just don't understand it. Because the convictor is all about being convinced. Whether it's something that you shouldn't be doing or something you should be doing. You see, sin is not, sin is missing the mark. We need as much conviction for not going for something as we are in not doing something or doing something we shouldn't do. It does little good that, oh, I haven't been drunk for 30 days. God bless you. Thank God. But when's the last time you reached for your dream? Sin is not, it's, you got it. Convictor, I welcome you, Holy Spirit, come. And so as I was thinking about this moment in closing, as I was thinking about you, I had a vision. I saw a vision of uh, broken down walls. Some weeds, some of them had been broken for so long. And I had visions of wild animals and wolves and and uh, buzzards and just people walking in and out of your life, just walking in, just taking the spoils. Is a, I'll take this, I'll take that. I'll, I'll take advantage of you physically. I'll take advantage of you emotionally. Yeah, you can't, you can't stop me. These walls, you got no, you got no borders. You got no moral muscle. You got no walls. Yeah, <laughs> And God showed me, I could see you. And you're like, what do I do? What do I do? And some of you have memories, bad memories, <laughs> haunting memories. They haunt you at night. And you do your best to try to get over them, but they, they flash before you. What do you do with those memories? God, those memories. God said, the convictor can evict them. And that's what he's going to do in the next 100 seconds or so. Watch, watch what's going to happen. Holy Spirit. Whew. 20 years ago, I think it was, and one of our members of our church was riding her bike 
mountain biking. Very, she was a Marine at one point. A mountain lion leaped, grabbed a hold of her helmet and her face, pulled her down in the ravine. He had already killed a man, the, the mountain lion, earlier that day. People threw rocks. Miraculously, she escaped. Had to have plastic surgery. But I went to the hospital. And when I walked into the room, the Holy Spirit told me, she'll never have the memory of this. She'll never have that mouth of that lion in her memory. And I prayed for her. And she's never, ever, ever had a memory of that lion. That's what God can do. He, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm thinking now of the Apostle Paul. His name was Saul. And Saul, Stephen, was preaching the gospel. And Saul thought he was evil. He thought he was against God. He dropped his mantle, the Bible says in Acts 6, which was the signal. They picked up the rocks, jagged edge rocks. The whole town gathered and they threw rocks at Stephen until gashes and blood, until he was a mutilated mess in a pile of rocks and he looks up into the heavens and he sees Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And then God calls Saul to be Paul. How do you get that out of your mind? How do you preach to people when it was their uncle that you murdered? How do you, you know how? The convictor. Delete, delete, clear history. Delete, 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 clear history and that's what he's going to do would you get your hands out like this and just look at me right now so I speak right now to those dark secrets and shadows no more don't fight them no more don't hide them don't be shamed by them just let the convictor come and help you I know you're afraid that God's going to make you forgive that person you got all these things that you're protecting yourself from, but let the convictor handle everything. Let him handle everything. Let him be the judge, the court, the jury, the witness. Let him do it all. Ah, I feel the Holy Spirit so strong right now. Do it, Lord. The Bible says, Nehemiah rebuilt the walls in 52 days. I feel the Holy Spirit says, watch what I can do in 52 seconds. I mean, right now, right now, right now, the walls are going back up. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. There they go up. There they go up. The walls are going up. The eviction notice has been served. Your mind is being cleaned and cleared. Your conscience which was once seared. Until you can hardly hear it whisper, let alone talk, is now being restored. Hear it? What? What voice, Phil? What vo that one. That one. That one. That's the voice. That one's coming back to you. That one is going to lead you. That one's going to guide you. That one, that's, that is, there it is. It's a pure, innocent, fresh, undefiled voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. my child take my hand says the Lord I will not betray you I will not turn you away I 
I will not harm you. I am for you. I will give you beauty for your ashes, joy for your mourning. Ray of light, beams of light, pierce through the dark. beyond the veil Holy Spirit fill me fill me He's as close as the breath you're breathing fill me Heal me. Just a few more moments. The Holy Spirit is taking over now. Feel after the Lord, He's not far from you. And once you feel, once you hear, never drift far from it. children to come before me. Maybe just 30 more seconds. My sweet Lord Jesus, may the Holy Spirit that you have given us access to be cherished, recognized, respected, and responded to. Soon the busyness will be rebooted in life and laughter and All things human will fill our eyes and our ears. But may we never forget this moment, for this moment is ours. Anytime we choose, we can find this moment. For you are always near, not far from any of us. Oh, my Jesus. Anybody feel like you want to say something? You want to worship the Lord? You want to say hallelujah? Anybody feel a thank you inside you? Thank you, Lord. Anybody feel a a, a hallelujah?
rich, isn't it? Mm. 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 Just a few more seconds. You get that witness of the Holy Spirit, everything changes. Wait for the wait. Then drops down in the depth of your soul and makes you whole. This is why Jesus said, it is better that I go away. For he, he will then come. He has come this day. He has come to us this day. He has shown us his way today. <sighs> Jesus. Jesus, thank you. If you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life and called upon him, Say these things in your heart. There's such a purity of God's presence in your heart. Do you acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God? That he died on the cross for your sins? And that by repenting of your sins, accepting that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved and so it shall be the gift of eternal life has come to you. Receive. For the healing and for the clarity and for the fresh revelation, for that we thank you, O God. For that, we give you all the glory and all the praise. And we honor you. And though in moments the atmosphere will change, who you are will not. And we embrace this. And we shall never forget these moments. And we will long for them. We will wait for them. We will welcome them. Everybody say amen. amen. What do you think? You like the convictor? Come on, let's, let's hear it for the convictor. He's our friend. He's for us. Come on, give God praise. Sure love you all.